This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Huh? Oh, it's just, uh, I've got this feeling that I need to be somewhere, like somewhere important. No, 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 I don't need to be at the clinic. No, that's... Shops? Do I need to go shops? Clinic? No, I said no, I don't need to go to the clinic. Dentist, maybe? I am British, so... Why do you keep saying clinic? Oh, right, yeah, okay. You know what, Cap? You really are the most disgusting thing in the world, aren't you? Hello everyone, welcome to episode 60... 61. Today, I felt like a palate cleanser. You know, once you've been doing some big projects, you just want to uh, make something small and kind of fun. So I was just, you know, hanging around the house, as per usual. Um, I, I don't really leave often. And, uh, you know, looking after my children. And I was looking at my son. And I'm just, I'm, at this point, I'm kind of looking for inspiration. I was looking at my son and he's, he was so happy. You know, he's really, really happy. And he's, he's playing with his, this, his little dinosaur toy. You know, and it started to make me happy, make me feel warm inside. Yeah, it was, it was a nice feeling because, you know, that toy he had was exactly the toy I was looking for. I may complain about, you know, having kids and having to do a lot of work and, you know, it's, it's very tiring. And, but when you get to see that face, you know, a single tear roll down his cheek as you cut the head off his little toy. I mean, it's, makes it all worth it you know I love being a dad what does it make me happy to look upon your face no not not really no it doesn't actually I feel kind of dread looking at you I don't know what it is it's just darkness yeah yeah no, I still don't know where I need to be today yeah I still can't can't put my finger on it someone asked why is my head always at this angle I think that's because I feel the overbearing weight of a ceiling on my head. Psychological. <sighs> Don't like it. Don't like it. Uh, anyway. So, toys. Toys. I have a box full of old toys somewhere around here. Uh, uh, I have a bag full of heads two uh, dinosaur heads dinosaur toy heads to be clear um before you uh, put that phone down uh, that's looking a pretty oh, there we go there's a dinosaur without arms he's uh, he's met me before and a bag full of plastic planes i'm not sure why i have that here we go dinosaurs uh, lots and lots of dinosaurs that i didn't steal from my son i just pretended to buy them for my son but really i bought them for myself that's that's the way i look at it uh, but yeah lots and lots of dinosaurs so this should do. So let's make some monsters, shall we? Uh, I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking, oh, Bill, I've seen this video. You've done this video before, you know, where you've taken your son's toys and made monsters using them. Uh, true, I've done it before. You know, there's two reasons why. One, I really enjoy cutting up old toys and turning them into monsters and creating lore about them, as you probably well know. And two, you lot blooming love it, okay? You, you love these videos where I cut up my son's toys. You know, whenever I stick in the thumbnail, you know, cutting up my son's toys to make monstrosities, you lot click on it straight away. So, you know, really, you need to go take a long look in the mirror and ask yourself that question. Um, but anyway, enjoy the video. Uh, thanks for coming along. I should probably talk about what I'm doing right this second. Okay, so I want a monster, you know, with an interesting face. And what's more interesting for a face than no face at all and just a bunch of uh, tentacles sticking out of a hole. So that's my thinking. That's what this thing is. Uh, I have lore for this. I'll talk about that later. As with all the builds in this video, just stick around to the painting or the boring story time with Bill section. 
always fill your holes up with tin foil, as your dad says. Uh, basically, it just saves space later on. You'll, you'll see why. So just tentacles coming out of a hole would be probably quite unhygienic. So I figured I would make a weird kind of like a beak that would close, but also open up like a big flower. Um, you'll see how later. Um, but yeah, that's the first creature. More to come. Beautiful. So this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you've ever wanted to make a website and you're not really sure how to do it, Squarespace is the place to go. Look, you get provided with hundreds of templates like these just there, and they're all pretty cool designs, I'll give them that. And uh, say you want to make a website about pickles. Look, oh, there we go. There's a pickle website. You can literally open this up, change the names. There you go. You have a pickle website. So I decided to make a website of my own for bill making stuff. Now, I've made plenty of websites in the past, and I have to say that Squarespace is the easiest and most intuitive website build I've ever used. It's... Uh, so easy to get great effect. I mean, look at this. This took me like five minutes. Uh, so if you want to make a website, click on the link down below. There is a sale going on. Uh, there you go. So this little Triceratops witnessed what we did to the last Triceratops, so it won't stop crying. Uh, we just need to, uh, there we go, sorted. So this time, I think I'm going to make some kind of burrowing monster, some kind of digging mole-like monster, perhaps. I need some big, giant claws. Now, who has the best claws in the dinosaur kingdom? The Velociraptor, obviously. Well, he used to, anyway. Um, as you can see here, I tried the whole face uh, for a towel and a towel for a face method, where you basically just turn the dinosaur around and it looks like some weird kind of hunched creature, uh, which almost looks like a mole already. Look at that. So I'm going to use this elephant toy. I particularly want its face minus the trunk, because as we all know, trunks are just big, long, floppy, stupid noses, aren't they? Uh, I hate trunks. But anyway, I don't have many animal toys. I have lots of dinosaur toys and not many animal toys. Actually, thinking about it, if you have a surplus of weird animal toys and you don't want them, please send them to me via my PO box address down below, uh, if, if you're so inclined. So as I said earlier, fill your holes in. Uh, we need some more butt foil. Here we go. Just uh, stuff it in there. You'll thank me later. That's what your dad told me. Um, sorry, dad jokes, crass, crude. I oh, know, sorry, they just come when they come. Lucky dad. So I have an idea for a weird flying creature. And uh, this T-Rex's body is, is kind of perfect for it. It kind of will look like a, you know, a plucked chicken when I'm done with it which is exactly what I'm looking for, really. Funny enough, that's how I met my wife. Uh, you know, uh, not that she looked like a, a plucked chicken, uh, but we were at a chicken plucking uh, welcher class. Um, you know, and we just started talking just about how bizarre this class was. So this weird flying chicken thing, I imagine, will have lots of weird barbed hooks that would hook onto its prey and uh, drink it for all it's worth. Uh, kind of like my first marriage, actually. Um, actually, the marriage I'm in right now with the wife I met at the chicken. Actually, none of this is true. I'm just trying to sound cool. I know a lot of my audience uh, are younger than me, so I'm just trying to sound cool, you know. And I read somewhere once uh, a book, How To Be Cool, and it said basically pretend you met your wife at a chicken plucking, uh, you know, day. And you're in a depressed marriage with kids and you never get sleep and you're always ill. That's that's what I read, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Just try and look, guys, I'm just trying to fit in, okay? Uh, let me know if it's working in the comments down below. And there we go, monster number three. Uh, a flying naked chicken with barbed hooks sticking out of it. Uh, let's make monster number four. Now I've never tried to make like a male and a female version of a monster, so I think that's what I'm gonna do today. Like, I already made the female version with the big weird flower face with the tentacle. I think I wanna try and make a male version of that, which is, uh, you know, funny enough what I'm doing right now. So I think my male version is going to be uh, a lot smaller with less legs, uh, a longer neck, and um, 
I don't know, just slightly more insignificant than the big one. Um, we have probably self-confidence issues, but, you know, he will just get things done. And, you know, he's not very good with calendars and he doesn't like to read calendars or, or plan anything in advance, um, you know, within an inch of its life. But other than that, you know, they, they're going to be pretty similar. So I'm going to take this towel from the female version and I'm going to give it to the male, you know, and the male is just going to have this big long towel that he drags around with him, never gets to use it for anything. Kind of pointless, uh, a bit redundant actually. Might as well just uh, lose it, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it's just a towel. I'm just talking about a towel. But uh, yeah, the male one has a, a big long towel. Not even that long, to be honest. Kind of average. So a quick rundown of what we have. We have this weird mole creature. Uh, we have this little naked flying chicken. Uh, that's gonna be flying on a stand somewhere. And uh, we have this thing we just made, which is the male version of, uh, well, the much bigger and much more impressive uh, this thing. So obviously these creatures are gonna need some milliput or green stuff to kind of smooth those joints. But uh, before we do that, I just wanna move on to like the detail stage, which is, you know, this stage right now that you're watching right now. We don't, you know, we already moved on to it. So I don't even know why I'm even, I think I'll just, I'll just be quiet. No, I'm not 100%. I probably could go and Google it, but I can't be bothered. I'm too busy recording narration to go and check that these spiky wheeled tall things are called tracing wheels. Uh, I think they're used for like uh, lever work, but I really wanted to attempt to make, you know, like a monster skin using EVA foam and a heat gun. And uh, this little experiment, I think, you know, was quite a success. That looks pretty cool to me. That looks like skin of some kind. So, you know, well done, Bill. That's all right, Bill. Cheers. <laughs> So we're going to use these rhinestones as eyeballs. Now, you know, I did used to get the rhinestones with sticky packs, but they're a pain when you're trying to super glue and the, the sticky bit starts coming off. So just try and get nail art rhinestones if you're going to look for them, because they tend to have like dry backs and you can just, you know, they're ready for sticking. Now, I want this thing to look like it has almost like an armadillo shell on its back. Actually, thinking about it, it's probably going to look like one of those sand shrews from Pokemon, uh, which is probably why my son is so interested in it and won't stop trying to grab it. Off, get lost, out of it. So there we go, it looks pretty weird and uh, colorful, but we're gonna blend all that stuff in later. So, uh, you know, stick with me, bear with me. Uh, you know, the usual. So the naked flying chicken. Uh, we need eyes for this thing. I like lots of eyes uh, on my weird creatures, just to make them look extra weird. And of course they have to be of varying sizes just to look even extra, extra weird. Uh, I think I've I was always inspired by that scene in The Fly when Brundlefly comes out of the uh, the other pod. You know, I think that always kind of sticks in there. So Miss Tentacle Face, uh, she uh, is, well, I'm not sure yet exactly. Uh, I did want some eyeballs, but I thought, no, she hasn't got a face. Uh, but I do like the idea of uh, these hemispherical things all over her body. I'll explain later what they are. But I imagine this thing is like cattle. The same goes with the uh, the male, you know, this little guy. And after that, I think we're about ready to sculpt some stuff. So I need to create texture and fill some holes. So the best stuff for that is a two-part epoxy putty, which is, you know, like this stuff here, which is green stuff. Basically you mix the blue and the yellow stuff together and it makes green stuff. And this stuff here, which is milliput. Uh, I usually combine all of these materials together, but you know, actually I just want to try milliput today, but this seems to have cured on its own. Uh, it's gone rock solid. So I'm just going to give that a quick bath. 
So if your mini putt has cured, you know, uh, a bit over time, you can submerge it in a warm bath and it does get softer, uh, which which it has here. But it's, it's still a bit granularly, not quite as uh, as smooth as it should be. So I'm just going to use it for the, you know, the bum bums and, uh, you know, just basically any joints that don't require a lot of detail. No, I don't know about you, but I find it extremely stressful when it comes to this stage, when I have to use two part epoxy putties. They're, they're, I mean, it cures in a certain amount of time, and once it's cured, it's cured, you know. Uh, and I find that extremely stressful. It's like when they give you the option to use a time limit on a game. Uh, I never, I always say no. Uh, this is some old green stuff that I've turned into like a texturing tool, and it works pretty well, I'll show you now. So talking of time limits and uh, things stressing me out, you know, it's also it's the same with calendars. You know, my wife's always telling me to read the calendar, uh, and I don't like reading. I don't like making appointments uh, because if even if it's several months away, it's playing in the back of my head. And you know, and I'm only saying this because I I feel like I have to be somewhere uh, pretty soon, and I'm not sure where. I don't, I don't leave this room often, but I don't know. I'm sure it come to me last minute. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just letting you know, just in case I have to uh, rush off. Um, but anyway, blend the putty in so it kind of looks like it's part of the skin, you know, by following the pattern, the scowls of the dinosaur onto the putty. It's quite hard to do and it does take quite a while. But I believe in you. So for the details, I'm going to use this extra fine white miller putt. Uh, it's not in two colours, you have to mix it together and it just remains white, which is a bit confusing. Uh, and I'm going to use this extruder to make little noodles. Uh, I love this tool. I found this tool from watching a Craftsman video. Two great reasons to watch Craftsman, you know, learn about new tools like this and uh, get to see a sock puppet, which uh, is always great. So I'm going to use the little noodles to help make these things look embedded in its back. I mean, they, they grow from the thing, so they kind of are protruding from its back. Uh, and it will probably look a little bit painful. Uh, but, you know, painful is more fun to paint, I find. You know, I like to create creatures and just uh, watch them live their life in pain. I mean, uh, you know, pretty much I'm quite a bit like God in that sense, you know. Plus, we both have beards. I felt like I should apologise actually for my God joke I just made there. You know, I tried apologising to God. He didn't answer me, funny enough. Um, obviously busy or something. Um, I don't know. He's, he's been off. He's awfully quiet, isn't he? Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's not fair to compare yourself to someone who doesn't exist. You know, you can never live up to it. Okay, so I've just come back from my YouTube channel, Analytics, and I, I've realized that about 60% of my audience is from America. So I, I feel like I just, uh, I need to backtrack a little uh, and, and apologize for comparing my beard to God's beard. Um, I, I do apologize. But anyway, back to the build. Yeah, that's about it for the sculpting part of the video. The super fine miller putt is really super fine, but it's it's kind of white and hard to see the details on, especially hard to film, as you can see. But uh, yeah, it leaves a nice big mess too. So just uh, give me a, give me a minute. So I just want to interrupt my video there for, you know, your usual call to action, you know, click subscribe, like all that stuff. Um, and if you really enjoy what I do here and, uh, you know, if you saw me somewhere public, you know, you know, you think I'd buy him a coffee, you know, but I watch Bill's stuff. I've watched hours of his stuff. I would buy him a coffee or a pint of beer, you know, consider joining Patreon because it's about the same price as buying me one beer a month, probably even less than one beer a month, to be honest. There is something. I do need to be somewhere. I have no idea. Party? No, I'm not. I'm not going to any. It's not a party. We don't. There's no planned parties. I'm never going to a party with you again. Yeah, it could be the the certain Hitler themed outfit you had. I mean, it's in bad taste.
I'm going to be honest, uh, quite embarrassing. Uh, but you didn't have to keep doing that salute. I mean, that was just a bit... Salute. Salute. <laughs> i got to go. I'm a salute at South London Warlords. It's like a convention for miniatures and tabletop war games. It's like Adepticon, uh, but with less Games Workshop and even less American. Turns out I had to be on a panel at Salute. Um, thanks to everyone who turned up, said hello. Just feel a bit funny, you know? I'm sure I recognise that bloke. So, time to paint. Uh, and I actually have a new set of miniature paints. Uh, there you go. Two Fin Coats sent me their whole range, and it looks blooming lovely. Look at it. Uh, I can't wait to use it. They didn't tell me to use it. But obviously, if they send me a whole set of paints, I'm going to use it. Uh, and listen, look, they've even got little ball bearings in them. But, as we all know, paint time is boring time. It's time uh, for Bill to bore you less than dry and paint. With little bits of lore that I've kind of come up with to, you know, provide a little bit of background. So this thing, I imagine, is like cattle. Uh, they rear them in a big ranch uh, and they basically hang around all day just eating any old crap but they take in the sunshine and they convert any food into energy and uh, they store it in these little orbs on their back uh, and people harvest them for their orbs basically they're batteries they're walking batteries that you can uh, harvest see that's what i imagine they are but this thing doesn't really have a mouth it kind of it spews up its stomach to uh, just grab whatever's you know in front of it and ingest it it's kind of disgusting uh, we'll talk about the female in a bit so this creature is, to me, uh, a cross between a pig and a mole. You know, basically it lives underground. It likes to burrow underneath things, you know, like mainly buildings. From time to time, buildings just uh, disappear in respite. You know, sometimes they just collapse for apparently no reason. Uh, but it's usually these things burrowing underneath, you know. They enjoy burrowing underneath foundations and making little nests. Uh, they're, they're quite a pest. They're normally killed on sight and eaten in the local king's head. They're not particularly aggressive to people. Uh, they're quite cowardly, but they do. They, they're not pigs. They'll eat anything. So they basically dig pits in the desert that people will fall in or animals will fall in. They will wait until that animal is too weak to fight them off and then start chewing on their legs. So this is the female version of the creature I showed you earlier. And they're much more developed. They're much bigger, they've got a much more developed mouth and they produce a lot more uh, energy using their orbs on their back. Uh, and they are farmed much more extensively. The males are kept around to impregnate them one lucky Friday a month or two months. You know, it depends. It depends how good they've been. They don't really see, they use the orbs on their back as kind of like light sensors uh, and they eat anything that they come in contact with pretty much. So, you know, watch out if a child gets too close, they have been known to be sucked in. Uh, the people of Respite have realized that these things are kind of like endless energy suppliers. So they kind of farm them extensively now, you know, when the rusters actually let them. This thing is like a parasite. It's basically like a, a mosquito in a way, uh, like a big gluttonous fly that drinks blood, uh, not necessarily from humans, but from any creature it can come across. It has all these barbed hooks. It will fly along, hook onto your back, not let go until it drinks every single drop of blood or fluid from your body. These things drink so much blood 
and fluid that they end up too big to fly. They end up like a giant bean bag full of uh, fluid and they just scuttle across the floor, uh, which makes them very vulnerable once they've eaten something to death. And they usually get avenged, pretty much. So I haven't named any of these creatures yet, you may have noticed, uh, and there's a reason. One, I'm terrible at naming things, uh, and two, I kind of want you lot to do it. So basically I want you lot to comment down below what you think each of these creatures should be named, uh, and uh, I will pick the best one, like some spoiled emperor child, you know. Um, so get to work. So I should probably talk about the two fin coats range, what it was like to use. Look, this is paint, model paint to me. It seemed like good model paint to me, but this is by no means a review and I'm by no means a painter. So I'm just gonna stick the link down below and you can go and pick some up if you like. I enjoyed using them, uh, but then what do I know? You know, what do I know? I just cover stuff in oil wash anyway, so. You know, for once I think I'm gonna just let this oil wash dry and uh, make some bases, you know, change it up a bit. So, I've talked about this before, but if you want some nice cheap wooden or cork bases for your models, go to a charity shop and look for some coasters. Now, coasters are what you put your hot cup on, on uh, your nanny's table, so it doesn't set the table on fire, and she has a heart attack uh, and dies in front of you and traumatizes you. That's, that's basically what they're invented for. I'm sorry, Grandma. Uh, but I like to use them as bases for models because, uh, call me stupid, I don't like spending £20 on a round piece of wood. Uh, I, just, I just don't, it just doesn't sit well with me. Or, you know, even a round bit of plastic. So this stuff is orchid bark. Uh, I don't know, I didn't know orchids had bark, but uh, yeah, it works really well as rocks and I found this in a pet shop. It kind of pains me when I see people spend a lot of money on base ready stuff, you know, like, because you're essentially buying bits of sand and rock. Now, if you're, if you're creative enough, you can go and find that stuff anywhere. You know, literally the earth is made of it. I think you should at least check the pet shop first. You know, uh, I've, I've essentially got every kind of size gravel going from the pet shop in some form or another. I think what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, don't waste your money. Uh, go and join my Patreon and uh, spend money there. Or buy a t-shirt. Or buy something from my Amazon wish list. Or you could buy a little pot of sand and tiny stones. But there you go, rent over. Uh, what am I doing? Oh yeah, look. So this is cork that I found on a placemat. It's like a, a giant coaster for a plate, uh, but basically break it up into your own little personal jigsaw puzzle and then try and put it back together again really badly. And it looks like cracked earth, uh, pretty easy. One of the best looking bases I've made, this one. And obviously we're probably gonna need some crusted. Now, uh, I don't really wanna tell you how to make crusted, but I think I'm gonna tell you how to make crusted. And there you go, there's my crusted recipe. Uh, I've shown you how to do it. Again, it's definitely become a thing now. Um, but yeah, crusted. So this uh, gluttonous blood sucking fly thing needs to be flying. So I'm gonna make my own flying base for this one. I, I'm gonna use these little discs and I got this little cocktail stirrer thing. I got a pack of these from Amazon, pretty cheap. So all of these bases, once they're dried, we'll get a nice dry brush and a nice oil wash and probably a dry brush again. Uh, but I'm not gonna show you that because you know those steps are kind of redundant, you know. Kind of like 90% of this video. Kind of like all my videos, you know, they're quite redundant. 
but uh, let's just call them ASMR, shall we? So there we go, four new monsters to add to the bestiary of, uh, you know, Tapu and Respite, this whole weird world that I'm making. Honestly, name these creatures down below in the uh, comments, because I, I am genuinely terrible at naming things, and I get most of my good names from you lot. You know, a Crusted was one of the names that someone suggested. I cannot remember their name, uh, but it was a good, good call. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you make your own monsters, uh, please follow me on Instagram and send me an image, send me a picture of the monster you've made. I think maybe the next episode may be some kind of collaboration. Uh, maybe, you know, just stop, collaborate and listen. Um, but I just feel like a collaboration. I haven't collaborated in a while. But anyway, glamour shots coming right up. And uh, I think that's it. Anything from you? Oh, he's not there. He's not there. Uh, must be at the clinic again. He's always at the clinic. I don't know what's, don't know what's wrong with him. He's a sick little cat. So there we go. Some more creatures to add to the bestiary of uh, Tapu, uh, which is the made up world that I'm making. You know, and the only difference between me and some crazy person is that you enjoy the made up world as well. Also, I want to say thank you to everyone who came to salute and said hello to me. You know, had their picture taken with me. Uh, I did tell you I was going to look grumpy, unapproachable, but you approached me anyway. So, you know, well done you. Awkwardness ensued, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. And of course, thank you, patrons. Where would I be without my patrons? You know, uh, I'm nearly at that point where I can buy myself some base ready stuff. Um, but then again, would you be my patron if I bought base ready? Would you? Really?